What's poppin' everybody? This is Sir Wolf 4 I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different today. Uh, first, we're gonna go through this super short match. It's gonna serve as my demonstration for the whole thing. And then we're gonna talk about the difference between unbalanced and overpowered cards, or really good cards versus unbalanced cards. So, as you guys can see, I'm gonna open up with my Rayquaza EX here. I mean, man, this, this match is almost is, is funny, but it's super sad at the same time. Uh, that's the reality of the expanded format. And maybe you guys are going to get an idea of what's going to happen now that you see for Amasa GX. So this Pokemon, if you don't know, basically has the ability to attack on the first turn, even if you play first, just like the old Latios EX. I don't know why my opponent would be using this uh, instead of Latios, but maybe because of the GX attack and the second attack too. Anyway, but what my opponent is going to be doing is going to be digging through his deck. He already played a few acro bikes, a few bicycles. You guys see, he's playing that Dedenne here, and he's going to be drawing, digging, drawing, digging as much as he can, and play as many add-ons, play the plus powers, play you know lasers, play some other attack boosters, and just try and basically KO me on the first turn before I even manage to do anything. So you guys can see he's still going, using Ultra Ball, he's going to get the Unknown, lets you draw an extra card, plays Shaman down, now this is important, Shaman, he draws 5 here, draw on 2, have 6, that's what Shaman does, going to go with the Kukui, draw 2, okay, he used up his supporter for the turn, also added 20 on his attack, Hypnotoxic Laser, okay, Trainer's Mel, keep digging, keep digging, it's going to get the Rescue Stretcher, alright, uh, this is probably going to get him uh, the unknown or something so farewell letter draw a card play down the uh, survivor boost the poison damage even further play down the sky field and it's going to keep digging ultra ball more than likely going to search shaman of course yes indeed i believe he must have played a battle compressor 2 or something uh, one or two of those uh, he keeps going after all and plus power so here comes the battle compressor i'm not sure if this is the first one or if he played a few but it's going to put a few cards there, and uh, yeah, this might be the first one, but played all of four plus powers. Played the laser, played the Kukui, and let's see what he's going to send there. He's at 16 cards, as you guys can see, so plays down, discards Bicycle, uh, Skyla, well, not Skyla, the Sky Field, and he's going to use the Dowsing Machine, A-Spec, get the Bicycle, attach the Beast Energy, that's a Beast Energy there draw four more cards. Here comes another Surviper, another Surviper, Rescue Stretcher, uh, gets the Unknown, he's gonna draw one more card, he's at nine cards right now. Bicycle once again, and he's gonna be like at five cards, four cards, another Battle Compressor, so this card's even more shit, and he's basically, uh, I go with the surprise face there, gets the Choice Band too, and he basically has successfully managed to deck himself out and whoop my ass. Fast raid, 150 damage, and with the poison, I basically lose. So, I'm not even going to say GG, but this is just a little demonstration. Okay, and now to the meat of the whole thing. The reason why I showed you guys this video is because this is a sad but pragmatic reality of the expanded format. And this isn't something that it's a first for me. It's not like this is my first time getting my ass kicked by this sort of a combo strategy. Like I've said, uh, you can do the same thing with Latios EX. The strategy has been around for a while. Uh, you play a super turbo deck. You want to draw your whole deck and then just attack on the first turn and just KO the opponent. I mean, if they, you play first, if you don't get another Pokemon out, they can, can still do the same thing, KO you. And if you play first, then you're basically going to lose before you even manage to do anything. Now, the surprising thing about this, uh, this particular matchup was is that my opponent basically managed to draw his entire deck. Like, he decked himself out. Uh, he left nothing there. He basically had like one or two cards, and I think he could have even drawn them if he wanted to. So that was the impressive thing on this particular matchup that I played. But that's not the whole point. The whole point is that the expanded format, I mean, it's a whole different story with the card pool and all of the combinations with such a mass card pool. It's expanded after all. 
But the thing is, is that there's a difference between unbalanced cards and overpowered cards. And I'm going to give you guys a perfect example. Zorok GX, nobody can deny, is a great card. It's basically a borderline perfect card. It's got great stats for our Stage 1 GX. It's got an attacker that's very good. With a full bench, you can do 124. One DC, nobody can complain about that. And it can even get stronger with Skyfield shenanigans. And you guys know the obvious stuff with that guy. Of course, the best thing about that Pokemon is his ability, which lets you discard a card and draw two cards. The GX attack is also great, being able to copy any of your opponent's attacks. For only one Darkness Energy, you can copy an insane GX attack or whatever. You know, it's borderline a perfect Pokemon, a perfect card. Between the stats, the attacks, the ability, there's nothing on it that's really bad, you could say. Like, really. If you look at other cards in the past, like, let's say, Garchomp C-Level X, uh, Luxchomp G-Level X, and other different cards, like maybe uh, Rayquaza cards, the Gardevoir from Secret Wonders, uh, these are basically perfect cards. The whole package, they bring everything you want. Good ability, good attacks, solid to perfect stats, excellent. The same can be said with Tapu Lele GX. You know, good stats, great attack, flawless ability letting you grab a supporter. These are basically overpowered, very good, perfect cards. However, they are not unbalanced. And the reason for that is... A card like Zorok GX, ability is great, but you can only do it once per turn. If his effect was you can ditch as many cards as you want and keep drawing cards, uh, I w that, that is unbalanced. I would have gone banned in basically a second. But yeah, imagine if Zorok GX's ability was you can discard a card and draw two cards. You can do it as many times as you want in a turn. That would have been busted. But that's not the effect. And this is why he is overpowered, but he's not unbalanced. The difference between an unbalanced card and a just a great overpowered card is a card like Shaman, a card like Battle Compressor, Execute, you know, all these cards. I've mentioned them numerous times, especially on my latest video talking about unbalanced cards, cards that needed a little bit more thought when they were designing them, in my opinion, is that they give you the endless possibility thing. You can just keep going. It just gives you that sort of endless possibility thing. You know, for example, Skyfield, you know, many people can argue whether it's a, a broken card or whether it's a fair card. But the thing is, the reason why that card gets so crazy is because of a card like Shaman, where you can keep playing those down, keep drawing cards, thin, thinning your deck, playing Ultra Balls, and keep drawing cards. You can essentially attempt to draw your whole deck uh, that card was essential in Seismitoad, essential in the Darkrai Turbo decks, Rayquaza, just about every deck can use that sort of engine if they want to go that full speed route. And that is a very unfair thing to do. This is what I mean by unbalanced. Its effect should have been, you play that Pokemon, draw until you have six, but you can only get that effect once per turn. Otherwise, uh, what happens here, what you guys saw, this is what happens. People can just design their deck based around that effect and just keep drawing, keep digging, and do something like this. You know, it doesn't even have to be this Feromasa strategy. It can be anything from the Rayquaza, Mega Rayquaza deck uh, that I was trying to use in this case and didn't even manage to get the chance to. The Seismitoad deck, Dark Ride Turbo deck, just about any strategy that you want to dig, you can do that. Another example, Execute talked about that guy a million times. The effect is very good, being able to grab that Pokemon from your discard pile and put it into your hand. What makes it super unfair, though, is that you can do it a million times in a turn. You can do it as many times as you want. So essentially, he makes all of the cards that require costs costless. You can use him as fodder for Skyfield, you know, play those Pokemon down. Like if your opponent got rid of your Skyfield and you had to discard Pokemon, no worries, you get rid of the executes, you can just play them down again, uh, get them back, play them down again, and essentially you've lost nothing. So all of these cards basically get combined together, and they make just a, a strong strategy, just all the more broken. They just It just makes everything worse. 
uh, like a execute and uh, a shaman they make skyfield worse execute i mean archie is a problem enough but a court like execute makes that shit even worse and on and on and on and in my opinion uh, they're doing a little bit better right now because the dene they just made sure that it's basically has what i'm talking about the dene gx when they released it that card you can only get the effect once per turn you don't get that juniper effect discard your hand and draw as many times you're only going to get it once per turn and it's fair this is how shaman should have been designed and this is basically what i'm talking about i think you guys are getting the gist uh, these kinds of cards battle compressor 2 just gives you endless possibilities the effect where you're going to dump any three cards from the deck into the discard pile is crazy when you consider that you can just dump anything so many possibilities you've got the ho-hos you've got execute you've got other strategies you can try you can put things like supporters get them with vs seeker just so many so many different things you know a card that gives you this sort of unlimited broken potential and thins your deck so much it just contributes to the whole brokenness thing i'm getting at here so i already made a video talking about the unbalanced cards and how they should have been designed a bit differently I'm not a big fan of Erratus, but it's something they really need, to be honest. They're not going to do anything. They're not going to do anything. At best, they're going to ban some cards, ban some of those cards eventually. But yeah, I made that video, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing again. You guys get the idea. But I hope you guys realize, maybe for your judgment, when you're basically grading cards, uh, this is what the difference is between a very good card, a card that is very good, but it's basically fair. It's just a very perfect card but that's fair versus an unbalanced card a card that gives you that sort of unlimited possibility you know you burn through your deck or you manage to do these sort of FTK strategies you know first turn complete setups first turn wins just you know you draw through your whole deck you get a super setup like that you know if it wasn't for many of these cards you know Rayquaza GX wouldn't be as broken you know the Darkrai Turbo decks wouldn't be as turbo like, my Greninja Zorok GX deck that I've just, I just uploaded and put some matches up, you guys can see that it's still turbo. I'm not running any Shamans in that, but, you know, it's, it's still turbo. The deck can still be very fast, be very effective. The difference is, is that it just doesn't draw the whole deck in a turn with the Shamans. And that's the really unfair thing. But anyways, uh, this video is a wrap. Got my point across, I believe. And like I've said, this is just a sad reality. It's almost funny, you know, watching that match where my opponent basically destroyed me, decked himself out, destroyed me, and I didn't even get to play. Uh, but it's also sad, not just funny, because that's a reality of the expanded format. And this isn't a healthy thing to have. It almost, it almost is reminiscent of Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, one of the reasons why I stopped Yu-Gi-Oh and why I dislike how Yu-Gi-Oh has become it's the whole thing of you don't play to win. You basically play not to lose. You play so that uh, you make you guarantee your opponent will lose. You're not going to win. You just guarantee they're going to lose. And I don't know if you guys understand uh, this sort of uh, irony in this. You don't want to give them a chance to play. Uh, I mean, I could talk about this for hours. But yeah, like I've said, this video is a wrap. I hope you guys enjoy, enjoyed my rambling. I hope I got my, I think I got my point across. I uh, hope you guys subscribe and leave a like. Share this video with your friends. I'll be back with my usual things. Uh, but this just was something I wanted to show you guys and talk about again. Uh, yeah, teach you guys the difference between unbalanced and overpowered cards. Uh, of course, it's subjective. But Cerebro 4 was saved.